Turn in your Bibles to the book of Hebrews this morning. Hebrews chapter number 9. Hebrews 9. Amen. Hebrews chapter 9. If you're trying to figure out who's supposed to make the coffee at your house, you need to read this book. <laughs> Amen. Half of y'all sitting there like, I ain't get that. Amen. You, you just keep reading, you'll figure it out. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Only 13 chapters. Amen. If you ain't figured out by the end of it, just read it again. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hebrews chapter 9, when you've turned there, stand with us. And uh, we'll try to give you a message that the Lord's laid upon our heart. The uh, Lord had a study in here um, about over a week ago and uh, uh, has continued to... Um, I don't know if the right word is evolve, but I guess it's evolve a different message out of it. So uh, we're going to do whatever the Lord will have us do. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. The Bible says, And as it is appointed unto men wants to die, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Let's pray. Father, we desire your help this morning. I, I cannot preach without you, Lord. I ask that you would use us as nothing more than a mouthpiece for you. Let us say your word this morning, whatever you'd have us to say, Lord, nothing more and nothing less, Lord. And Father, I pray if there's one that's lost today, I pray that you'd save them, for it's everlasting too late. In Jesus' name, and amen, and amen. You can be seated. Amen. Here in Hebrews chapter number 9, amen, you study Hebrews chapter 9 and it's an interesting chapter in the Bible, amen. Uh, say, preacher, what do you mean? Well, Hebrews 9 paints a picture of Christ in three different tenses, amen, in three different times it paints a picture of Christ, amen. Look briefly with me by way of introduction at verse number 11. The Bible said in verse number 11 of Hebrews 9, But Christ being come, and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by His own blood, He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. It shows Christ in the past. Amen. A Christ came on this earth, Amen. He walked upon this earth, amen, just as well as you and I walk upon this earth. Amen. And he, he lived life as a man. He was 100% man, yet he was 100% God. Say, preacher, explain it. I can't explain it to you, but it's the truth. Amen. And that's what the Bible teaches us. Amen. And he uh, lived a perfect sinless life, amen, and died upon the cross for mine and your sin. Amen. That's why the verse said, not by the blood of goats. There is now no need for us to sacrifice on an altar as they did in the Old Testament. Amen. That's not going to bring you anything in this day. Amen. Calves or anything else. It said, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place. And it said, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Now let me just say this for a minute, amen. Let me get the independent Baptist in me out this morning, amen, and just throw this at you, amen. Eternal redemption means once saved, you're always saved. Amen. You cannot get saved twice. If you could get saved twice or if you could lose your salvation, I'd live a scared life and you'd live a scared life. Amen. Because uh, I know me and you know you. Amen. And we know we'd lose it. Amen. It said having attained eternal redemption for us. Amen. I'm glad, amen, that there was a Christ in the past. Say, preacher, what do you see of Christ in the past? I see Christ the Redeemer in the past for us. Look over in verse 23 of this chapter. Verse 23, the Bible says this, It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself now. I like that word now, don't you? Amen. Now to appear in the presence of God for us. Amen. It shows, this chapter shows Christ in the past, and here it shows Christ in the present. Amen. That word now means at this present time. Amen. And now is not tomorrow. Now is not yesterday. Amen. That means at this moment. Amen. And He's appearing in the presence of God for us. 
Amen. That means this. Amen. I have a Savior. Amen. I have a go-between. I have an intercessor. Amen. That I can call upon and He takes my petitions to the Father. Amen. That means it's nothing that I've done and nothing that I am, but everything that He is and everything that He's done is the why anything uh, would go my way and go your way. Amen. He appears in the presence of God for us. Amen. That means this. Say, preacher, what do you mean? And that means Christ in the past is Christ the Redeemer. Amen. But in the present, we see Him as Christ the Intercessor. Amen. Amen. He's interceding on our behalf. Amen. You and I, let me say this to you, we're owed nothing. Amen. We're owed absolutely nothing. Amen. There's a, 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 a sad a, a, a adage in, in the world today that uh, we are inherently owed something. We're, we're owed nothing, amen. Christ sent His Son to die on the cross for you and I for our sin, amen. We're owed nothing, amen. He didn't owe us that, by the way, amen. amen. Uh, but He loved us enough to give us that, amen. And that may, let me say this to you, friend. You and I are owed nothing. That means we cannot go, amen, to the throne, amen, in such a way of haughtiness, in such a way of saying, God, give me this. God, I deserve this. God, I deserve that. No, friend, amen. We go to Jesus Christ and He is the intercessor on our behalf, amen. And we don't go to Him with haughtiness. We go to Him with humbleness, amen. The Bible tells us in James chapter number 4, we should ask according to His will, amen, amen. and not our own, amen. So we see that there is Christ in the past and Christ in the present. But I'm concerned this morning... With Christ in the future. Look at verses 27 and 28. It said, And as it pointed unto men wants to die, but after this, the judgment. And it said, So Christ was once offered. <laughs> once. Amen. Offered. Amen. That means he ain't going to come back to go die on the cross again. Amen. That means Christ is not coming back. Amen. Uh, to be whipped and beaten and crowned with a, a crown of thorns again. Amen. That's not happening again. That's not happening a second time. He was once offered to bear the sins of many. And look at this. And unto them that look for Him shall He appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Amen. I want to preach this morning on this thought. On Christ the Deliverer. Amen. Christ the Deliverer. Amen. Christ, let me say this to you, amen, is coming back. Amen. Whether you believe it or not, amen, He'll be back. Amen. The second coming of Christ, I believe we're closer to it, amen, than we've ever been. Amen. I believe this, amen. I've said this many times. I believe I may have even said this Wednesday night, amen. Uh, but I'll say it again because it's true, amen. I am preaching to you closer to Christ coming back than I have ever preached to you closer than Christ coming back. Amen. I'm preaching to you a closer to that day of seeing my Lord and Savior in the flesh, amen, in His holiness, amen, than I have ever been to that day. Amen. That tells me this, amen. If I'm doing that this morning, then you're sitting here this morning in Way of the Cross, Missionary Baptist Church, amen, closer to Christ coming back than you have ever been to Christ coming back. Amen. You're listening to the, what may be the last message you ever hear. Amen. You're attending what may be the last church service you'll ever hear or you'll ever be at. Amen. Uh, let me say this to you, friend. Amen. Uh, we could be closer, and we are closer than we have ever been. Amen. To Christ's coming. But I'm thankful. The Bible says this. It says that many, but it said, unto them that look for Him. And them, unto them that look for Him. Can I tell you this? Say, preacher, what do you mean? I'm going to get real mean right here. Amen. But I don't believe somebody's on their way to heaven that ain't looking for heaven. Amen. I don't believe somebody's ready to exit this world, amen, that ain't looking for the exit out of this world. Amen. Well, I don't think, amen, let me say this to you, amen, I, I don't believe, amen, you can be comfortable, amen, in the things that are going on, the wickedness and the sin and the vileness that are going on in this world right now, amen, and be saved at the same time. I don't think you can. Amen. Say, preacher, you're judging people. You call it what you want, amen, you'll say that anyway, amen. But my Bible says he's going to appear that second time. Amen. Unto them that look for Him. Amen. I believe God's people are looking for God to come. 
Amen. I believe God's people are waiting on God to come. We just preached on that on Wednesday night. Amen. But let me say this to you. It said, shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Amen. That word salvation in the Old Testament, you know what it means? It means deliverance. Amen. Every time you see the word salvation in the Old Testament, uh, when uh, the psalmist David is writing and he uses that word salvation, he's talking about being delivered out of this world. He's talking about being delivered out of his problems, amen, out of his troubles, amen. And let me say this to you, friend. Christ is coming back to deliver his church. Amen. Amen. It is not, let me say this to you, it is not for us to dwell in this world long. Amen. It's not for us to dwell here long. Amen. But let me say this to you. Say, preacher, what do you mean? Well, let me tell you some things that there's deliverance from this morning. I'll try to preach fast. You listen fast, and I'll preach fast. Amen. That way, if I preach long, it's your fault, not mine. Amen. So, let me say this to you. Amen. Uh, There's deliverance this morning. Amen. Uh, There will be deliverance from this world. Amen. I want you to note this. I was studying this week. God showed me this. I, I'd never seen it this way. And maybe you did years ago. But good for you. Amen. God didn't show it to me to this week. Amen. But I was thinking about Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Right? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. There's three things in there. God, the heaven, and the earth. Amen. And then I go on to read in John 1, 1. Amen. That in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. So the Word is God. (laughs) Amen. And so in the beginning, amen, you have God, amen, which is the Word. You got the Word, amen, you got heaven, and you got earth. Amen. And then I read in Matthew chapter 24 that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my Word shall not pass away. Amen. I don't know if you've ever noticed that, amen, but there was three things He made, amen, amen. One thing He was, amen, two things He made, but the two things He made, He's going to make pass away, amen. But let me say this to you, His Word will not pass, amen. God won't pass, friend, amen. This world, amen, is going to go away, amen. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this, stop putting stakes down here. Amen. Stop putting stakes down in this world, friend. Amen. We got a group of individuals there. They're so concerned with the environment, but they ain't never read a Bible. Amen. That's something wrong with that. Amen. You ought to go hand in hand, really, if you're going to do that. Amen. Let me say this to you. Amen. I'm not hugging trees. Amen. I'm not worried about the environment because as far as I'm concerned, God might just be setting this thing up. Amen. For this earth to come right off the map. Amen. I'm not going to say, Preacher, that offends me. Well, a great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. Read your Bible. Amen. And But let me say this to you, friend. Amen. Let me say this. This earth is going to be gone soon. That means that this earth and the things of this earth are leaving with it. Amen. Heaven and earth shall pass away. Amen. The sky as we know it is going to be gone. Amen. The earth as we know it is going to be gone. Amen. Say, preacher, what do you mean? Don't put stakes down in this earth. Amen. Uh, let me say this to you. You can take nothing with you. Amen. Amen. Uh, let, me, let me read some text to you. Amen. Over in, in the book of Matthew. You ain't got to turn here this morning. But in Matthew uh, chapter number 6, the Bible tells us uh, some things about uh, where we ought to put our treasure. Amen. Say, preacher, what do you mean? The Bible says, lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Say, lay not treasures upon this earth. But it says, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where thieves do not break through, nor steal. It says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. Amen. Let me say this to you, friend. Amen. There ain't nothing wrong with having some things down here. Ain't nothing wrong with having things. Amen. Ain't, hey, I'm going to throw this at you. There ain't nothing wrong with having money. Amen. Give me some. If you got excess, if you think there's something wrong with you having yours, I'll help. Amen. I, I, I will volunteer as tribute. Amen. Uh, but let me say this to you, friend. Amen. There ain't nothing wrong with having some substance. But don't put your treasure in that substance. Don't put your treasure in that substance. Amen. Hey, let me say this to you. Your money ain't going with you. Amen. And your money ain't going to mean a thing in heaven. Amen. Uh, that, that, that nice house, that nice car, amen, that nice this, then ain't nothing wrong with having them things. But let me say this to you, they're not going with you. 
Amen. They're not leaving this earth with you, friend. Amen. I know some folks, amen, that, uh, uh, and, and I'm not uh, poking fun and being mean, but I know some folks uh, that say, well, when you bury me, bury me with this. That's fine, and it might, mean, it might make a sentiment. I get that. It's a sentiment, but friend, nothing goes with you. Nothing goes with you. The Apostle Paul wrote in, in 1 Timothy chapter number 6, I believe verse number 7, he said, it's, we come into this world with nothing, and it is certain we can take nothing out. <laughs> Amen? It's certain we ain't, we ain't taking nothing with us, friend. Amen? And let me say this to you. When we get to heaven, we'll realize why. Amen? We'll realize we didn't need those things down here. Amen? We'll realize, amen, that those things are just a distant memory. Amen? We might not even remember them. Amen? I want to tell you, friend, amen, that this world, quit putting so much stake down in this world, amen, and getting so concerned with this world when I've got a greater world waiting on me. Amen? I've got a greater country waiting on me. Amen? I've heard a lot of folks say, uh, well, this is the uh, greatest country in the world. Amen? This is, I believe that. I believe this is the greatest country in the world. Amen? Amen. But let me say this to you. This is not the greatest country I'll ever live in. Amen. I'm going to be going to a better place one of these days. Amen. That's far better, amen, than anything this world or this country has for me. Amen. Amen. Let me say it. Let me say this to you. It's ought to make somebody shout. This world ain't it. Could you imagine how miserable we'd be this morning? Amen. We'd have a Methodist service, bless God, if we'd... <laughs> yeah, if this world was it, amen, amen. I, I mean, I mean, really though. I, 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 I'm just poking fun there, but really, could you imagine how miserable we'd be if this was it? I mean, if if the best if the best hope we got is who the president is, could you imagine? I'm talking either side. I ain't being political. I'm just saying, if that's the best hope we got, is Donald Trump or Joe Biden? If the best hope we got is who the governors are. The best hope we got is who the mayors are. Amen. If that's, if that's the best it gets. Amen. Oh, my. If the best, we can, if the, if the best that it ever gets for us, amen, is, is, is the filth and the mess that's on the television, amen, and the heartache and the trial we go through down here, amen, if that was it, my goodness. Amen. My goodness, amen. No wonder the lost people can't shout. They don't have that hope. Amen. They don't have that hope. That, hey, let me say this to you. Uh, to a lost man, this world is it. Amen. Because they're going to hell after this. Amen. Amen. And this world's the closest to heaven they'll ever get. Amen. That's why a lot of them are writing songs comparing the world to heaven. Amen. Don't you compare the world to heaven. Amen. The world's going to be nothing like, or heaven's going to be nothing like the world. Amen. Let me say that to you, friend. Amen. This world ain't it for us. Amen. We've got something better waiting upon us. Amen. Amen. I see that there is deliverance from this world. Amen. I see that Christ will come back not only for deliverance from this world, but let me say this to you. Deliverance from the troubles of this life. Amen. The troubles of this life. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. Amen. And if you don't feel this way, give it some time. But life is difficult. Life is difficult. Thank God for good days. Thank God for good days. Amen. I thank God that I've had more good days than bad days. I have. Amen. And if you're honest with yourself, you, you can say the same thing this morning. But there has been bad days. Amen. amen. There has been uh, times, amen, that I, I didn't want to do it. Amen. Didn't want to get up. Amen. Didn't want to go through with it. Didn't want to make that phone call. Didn't want to go there to that place or whatever the case may be. Amen. There have been times where I just wanted to say, I throw in that white towel and I'm done. Amen. Say, preacher, I ain't never been there. Well, tell me your secret. Bless God. Amen. Because we've all been there. Amen. We've all got to that point. I've been ready to quit and said it's just not worth it anymore. It's just awful. Amen. Why? Because the troubles of this life will hit us. Amen. They will come to us. There's not a nary person one in here that is exempt, amen, from the troubles of this life. Amen. The Bible tells us it rains on the just just as much as it rains on the unjust, friends. Amen. That means you're going to have a bad day and I'm going to have a bad day. You're going to get some bad news and I'm going to get some bad news. Amen. We're going to go through things. Amen. And some of you this morning, amen, you've been through things that I cannot fathom, that I cannot imagine, and I couldn't imagine until, uh, unless God put me through it, amen. Uh, but let me say this to you, friend, amen. We're getting deliverance out of the troubles of this life. 
Amen. Out of the things of this life. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. Can you imagine there will be no bad days? There will be no bad days. Amen. There will be no bad days. Amen. Let me say this to you, friend. Amen. There'll, there'll be no, uh, uh, no, no funeral services up there. Amen. We talked about this last week. Amen. No funeral services. You won't be burying your babies up there. Amen. Amen. There'll be none of that. Amen. Let me say this to you. There'll be no financial burdens. Amen. You won't get in a financial bind up there. Amen. We won't have to worry about those things. Amen. Amen. Uh, let me say this to you. Uh, there'll be no sickness. Amen. No COVID-19. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, there'll be no cancer. Amen. No flu. No none of that. Amen. No nothing. Amen. No, no hospital rooms. Amen. Uh, no, uh, no situations. No nights of sitting there on the edge of your bed saying, Why? Why did this happen like this? Why did I end up in this situation? Why am I going through this? Friend, we're going to leave that behind. Amen. We're going to leave those nights behind. Amen. We're going to leave those troubles behind. Amen. Why? Because we're going to be, amen, with the light. Amen. We're going to be with God Almighty. Amen. He's going to deliver us from those. Amen. I'm glad of that, aren't you? Amen. Can I say this to you? This ought to help you. There'll be no disappointments. Amen. Say, preacher, I ain't never been disappointed. Well, you ain't never pastored. <laughs> amen. You ain't been in church long. Amen. Amen. You ain't been a member. Amen. If you ain't never been disappointed. Amen. Uh, let me say this to you, friend. People will let you down. People will let you. I've seen so many folks. Amen. They'll, they'll, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll get on the social media and they'll say, well, this so-and-so news station's let me down. Why were you putting confidence in the news station in the first place? Well, I want to ask, amen. Why this so and so, this this person over here, uh, they let me down. You you go witness to folks, and you and knock on the door and uh, say, do you go? To, are you saved? And, oh yeah, I'm saved. Do you go to church? No, I don't go to church. Why don't you go to church? Well, so and so, that preacher down there did me this way, or that that person down there did me this way, or that church member did me this way, amen. And let me say this to you: the problem was their confidence was in the preacher, their confidence was in so and so, their confidence was in the person, amen, but not in God. Amen. Let me say this to you. Folks will let you down. Amen. There will be disappointments in this life. But my God has never let me down. He's never disappointed me. Amen. And I can't wait till I go, amen, to the land where He dwells. Amen. And I'll dwell with Him forever. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. Amen. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Comfort one another with these words. Amen. Let me say that to you, friend. Amen. If we shall ever be with the Lord. Amen. That ought to be comforting to you and I. Amen. amen. The one that can't let us down. Amen. Let me say this to you. Let me say this to you this morning, church. There'll be deliverance not only, amen, from this world and from the troubles of this life, but there'll be deliverance from sin and temptation. Amen. Full deliverance from sin and temptation. Amen. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. Let me, let me, let me turn over. Uh, oh, I went the wrong way. Amen. Let me turn over here. Amen. Uh, uh, to Revelation. Amen. Revelation 21. Amen. Let me read some text to you. The Bible tells us, it says John, he's looking into heaven. He's seeing some things in heaven. He said, I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Praise God, we ain't going to have a church house. <laughs> you ever thought about that? It said, in the city had no need of the sun, neither the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it, talking about heaven, anything that defileth, neither whatsoever work of the abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Say, so, preacher, let's cross-reference this morning. I say, what do you mean? I want to show you something. Amen. The Bible tells me, amen, in, in Proverbs chapter number 6. Amen. There's six things that the Lord hate. Each seven are an abomination. Amen. The Bible told me right there in Revelation 21 that there will never be anything enter in there that worketh an abomination. Amen. That tells me this. Amen. Six things that the Lord hate. Each seven are abomination in Him. There will not be a proud look. Amen. There will not be a lying tongue. Amen. There will not be hands that shed innocent blood. Amen. There will be no abortioner. 
Amen. There won't be a heart that devises wicked imaginations. Amen. There won't be feet that'll be swift and running to mischief. Amen. And there won't be a false witness that speaketh lies. Amen. And there won't be him that soweth discord among the brethren. Amen. Those seven things, amen, the Bible lists specifically as abominations unto God. The Bible tells us they, those things won't, won't enter in. Whatsoever worketh abominations. And let me say this to you. It said whatsoever worketh abominations. That means whatever sin conceived those abominations. Whatever led up to those abominations. Amen. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this, that last one. He that soweth discord among the brethren. You know what usually leads up to that? Jealousy. You know what usually leads up to that? Hatred. You know what usually leads up to that? Strife. You know what usually leads up to that? Amen. Envy. Amen. And those things. Amen. Say, preacher, what do you mean? Amen. They won't be there in heaven. Amen. We won't have those things in heaven. Amen. And I said that to say this. Amen. If you ain't careful, jealousy will spring Amen. Oh, let me say this to you. Say, preacher, we ain't supposed to hate nobody. I agree with you. But hatred will spring up in your life. Amen. It'll spring up in your life. Amen. Anger. Amen. Envy. Amen. All kinds of, uh, of, of sin. Amen. It'll spring up in your life. Amen. It'll start in your mind. Amen. The Bible says, when sin, uh, hath, uh, when, sin, when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Amen. That means this, friend. Amen. That lust comes up into your mind. Amen. And it will conceive itself into sin. Amen. It will do it. Amen. Let me say this to you, friend. I'm glad we're going to a land, amen, where there will be no sin. Amen. amen. Say, preacher, I'm sinless here. You're a liar. That's <laughs> what the Bible says, by the way. Amen. That ain't what I'm telling you. That's what the Bible says. Amen. For all sin comes short of the glory of God. You ain't sinless. You ain't sinless. Amen. Your sin might not look like, smell like, or taste like everybody else's sin, but it's sin. Amen. Amen. It's sin. You offend in one point, you're guilty of the whole law. Amen. You're guilty of the whole. That means this. Amen. That means there is no difference between the one that stole the pack of bubble gum and the one that shot somebody last night. Ain't no difference between the two of them. Sin, sin. Sin is sin. The wages of sin is death. Amen. Let me preach right here for a minute. Amen. That means this. Amen. If you've ever told a little white lie, you're on your way to hell. Save the, save the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. If, you've ever, uh, done, if you've ever been dishonest, amen, if you've ever uh, could have helped somebody and you neglected to, amen, that's enough to send you to hell. Amen. amen. If, you've ever, if you've ever whined just for attention, amen, and I tell you, adults do it more than babies do. Amen. Amen. If you've ever done that, amen, and not really been like the boy that cried wolf, amen. They tell that story so much when you're a kid that you think it's just a fairy tale, amen. But there's all kinds of people that do it, amen. Let me say this to you. That's lying, amen, is what that is, amen. And just as much, amen, and just as much as we might say, oh, that's just a small thing, friend, that's enough to send you to hell. Amen. Sin, the wages of sin is death. Amen. And it still is today. It ain't changed. Amen. I don't care who says otherwise. Amen. The Bible says the wages of sin is dead. Amen. And it's the truth. Amen. A sin will send you to hell. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, I'd get saved. Amen. Let me say this to you. Because that leads me to my last point. There's deliverance. Amen. We're from this world, amen, we're leaving this world, amen, we're leaving the troubles of this life, we're leaving the sin and the temptation, amen, there'll never be a tempter, amen, there'll never be another temptation, amen. This next one, I'm already delivered from it, but one day, amen, amen, uh, uh, if you're not, you won't be, let me put it like that, and that's hell, there's deliverance from hell, amen. Can I say this to you this morning? Listen to me. If you missed everything else I've said, you listen to this and listen to it good. I'm saved. And I never have to worry about going to hell. I'm saved and I never have to worry about going to hell. But if you're not saved, that's where you're headed. Amen. I make no apology in saying that this morning. Amen. Say, preacher, why? Because I got saved because some preacher stood up and told me... <laughs> If you're not saved, you're on your way to hell. Amen. 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 Let me say this to you. Mom and Daddy didn't get mad at the preacher. I'm going to say that again. 
Mom and daddy didn't get mad and offended at the preacher for telling their six-year-old boy that he was on his way to hell. Amen. They let the preacher keep preaching. Amen. Why? Because he wasn't preaching nothing that wasn't in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. And because God had great plans. Amen. Amen. God knew what he was doing. Amen. God knew. Uh, let me say this to you. Uh, that preacher might not have known. Mom and daddy might not have known. But God knew what he was stirring in my heart. Amen. God knew the thoughts that he was stirring in my head. Amen. And God knew he was working in my heart. Amen. And he gave that preacher that message. He shut the mouths of mom and daddy to say anything to that preacher. Amen. And let the preacher keep preaching to me that I was on my way to hell. That I was dirty that I was rotten, that I was low down, amen, and that I needed a Savior, amen. And let me tell you, friend, I got saved because of that. Amen. 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 Let me say this to you. I didn't get saved because of how beautiful heaven must be. I love that song. I love to sing that song. But I didn't get saved because of that song. Because of the words of that song. It didn't, it didn't mean anything to me. Amen. I, I got saved as a six-year-old boy because I didn't want to die and go to hell. Say, so, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. You might be a 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 year old person. Amen. 100 and 155. Amen. Some of them voted. Amen. Somehow. Amen. But let me say this to you. Amen. Uh, uh, let, let me say, <laughs> amen. Let me say this to you. No matter your age this morning. Amen. Let me say this. Uh, avoiding hell is a good reason for you to get saved. Amen. amen. Getting saved just because you don't want to die and go to hell, that's a good enough reason. Amen. That'll work. Amen. That'll last. Amen. Let me say this to you. I've learned a lot since then. Amen. But if I could go back, amen, I'd still get saved on the sheer principle of not going to hell. Amen. I've learned a lot more about hell since then. Amen. Of what it is according to my Bible. Amen. The Bible tells me it's a place where the fire is not quenched and the worm dieth not. Amen. That means this. It's eternal suffering. Amen. The rich man was tormented in that flame. Amen. Is what the Bible says. Amen. And, and all he wanted was a dry of water, amen, just a little drop of water, amen, is all he wanted, just a, just a finger of a drop of water, amen, that would have been enough to comfort him, amen, let me say, do you know how much pain you got to be in for just a little finger of a drop of water to be considered comfort? Amen. That's a lot of pain. Amen. Pain and suffering. The Bible tells us they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth, amen, there's wickedness in hell. There is no party in hell, by the way. Amen. There's no party. There's no reunion. Amen. There's no fun. Amen. And there's no relief. It's just suffering. Amen. It's just suffering in hell. Amen. I'm glad I've got a Savior to deliver me from that. Amen. I took care of that. Let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. I'm about done. Lost people still go to hell. No matter what anybody else says, let me say this to you. Lost people still go to hell. Amen. You die without Christ, you still go to hell. Now let me say this. So we're preaching about Christ coming back. I told you we're closer than we've ever been, church. Closer than we've ever been. Say, so preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. I mean this. Before you'll ever know Christ the Deliverer, you've got to know Christ the Redeemer. And you've got to know Christ the Intercessor. Amen. It's got to be, you, you got to know, amen, that he died for your sins. Amen. And you got to have him as your companion now, as your intercessor now, as, your, as the person that intercedes now for you. Say, so, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. I said this, I believe, I believe it was on Thursday night Bible study there, and I guess God just had my mind on it all week, but what if, what if Christ was to come back today? What if he was to come back today? I'm not preaching just to lost. I'm preaching to all of us right now. Amen. So, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. Are you saved? Do you know for a fact you'd be going? The Bible said he's going to appear the second time unto them that look for him. Amen. To those that are looking. Amen. To those that are looking. Why is it? The second time without sin unto salvation, unto that deliverance out. Amen. Unto this, unto leaving this world behind. Amen. Let me say this to you. If you're lost, amen, you're not going. You're not going. Say, but, but, mama, but mama and daddy are saved. You're not going. Amen. Mom and daddy will go, you won't. Amen. But brother and sister are saved. Brother and sister will go, but you won't. But my mom and papa and, 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 and the preacher and, and, and the song leader and the, and the church members and the church leaders, they're saved. They'll go. 
But you won't. You won't. Amen. That's a serious thing. Let me ask you this this morning, church. Let me ask you this. Show of hands. How many of you in here got somebody in your family? In your, or maybe a child, maybe a, 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 a cousin, a niece, a nephew. Amen. Maybe a mama, a daddy, a grandma, a grandpa. I don't know. Got somebody in your family or, or somebody you work with or somebody you're friends with, or somebody that you just know and have a means to talk to, amen, that if they, if the Lord come back right now, they'd be left behind. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Boy, it'd be good for us to... Couldn't you imagine? Couldn't you imagine if they called at the end of this service while you was driving home? Said, I just wanted to tell you I got saved. Couldn't you imagine that? Oh, couldn't you imagine that? Singers, you come on. Get ready. Get a song prepared. Let me say this to you, friend. Amen. Everybody in here, raise their hand from what I can see. Amen. That means you know somebody. Amen. Let me say this to you. If you lost this morning, I I'd find you an altar. Amen. We got folks here that'll pray with you, that'll show you the way to heaven. Amen. Show you how to not go to hell. Because if you're lost this morning, you're on your way to hell right now. And you'll stand before God without an excuse. But let me say this to you. What about those of us that raised our hands? Amen. Yeah, knowing somebody. Maybe you ought to find an altar this morning and pray for them. Call their name specifically out to God. Say, God, save them. God, do whatever you need to do to save them. Whatever you need to move, whatever you need to go about, save them, Lord. Hey, we're in the last day. We're running out of time, church. Everyone stand this morning as the singers sing. If you have a need, come.